Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Okay, so the 2020 question um, on trig, so it was question four on paper two. Part A, find the two values of theta for which tan theta over two equals minus one over root three, where zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to four pi. It's a little bit unusual, this one, in that we have a fraction here, and I suppose it goes to four pi. Okay, but steps are still the same. Nothing changes with the steps. So again, I'm going to use this to find out my reference angle, and then I'm going to use cast to figure out which quadrants am I dealing with that gives... Um, an angle of minus one over root three. Okay, so just like before, I want to solve for theta, so I need to get rid of tan, so let's get the tan inverse. So leave theta over two as it is. Okay, and get the tan inverse of, remember, just the positive. Okay, we'll use the minus to tell us the quadrants, but when we're getting the reference angle, um, just take the tan inverse of the positive. So make sure you're in radian mode, okay? You always know you need to be in radian mode because of the pi. So tan inverse of one over root three. Sorry, I got tan of it instead of tan inverse. One over root three. So a sixth pi. So that's my reference angle, okay? And I always put that down there, um, the words reference angle, so that I don't confuse it and include it as, as one of my answers when it may not be. Okay, let's draw cast. C-A-S-T. And then you come back to your minus one over root three, and you're asking yourselves, in which quadrants is tan negative? Okay, We're all positive here tan is positive here. So this quadrant, tan is negative. This quadrant, tan is negative. Okay, so tan negative in these quadrants. Okay, so therefore I'm dealing with the second quadrant. Okay, so in that case, tan over two. So the reference angle, remember, is always with respect to the horizontal axis. So that's your reference angle there, okay? But the angle in question, we always take from the positive sense of the x-axis, okay? So the easiest way to calculate it then is 180 degrees, which is here, but we're dealing in radians. So that's pi minus a sixth pi. So it is equal to five sixths pi. And then we're in the fourth quadrant. And in the fourth quadrant, I'll just change color. Your reference angle is here. It's always with respect to that horizontal axis. Okay, but again, this is our, our angle that we require. So the easiest way to do it is two pi, is go the whole way around minus the reference angle. Okay, so that's 12 sixths minus one sixth, so 11 sixth pi. Okay, let's write them in general form like we always would. Um, so theta over two is equal to five six pi plus n two pi. And uh, theta over two is equal to 11 six pi plus n two pi. Okay, so nothing different there, no steps there at all. I'm carrying the fraction with me all the way down to here and I'm not letting it bother me, okay? So in, in other ones we would have done at this stage, for example, we would divide across by three, okay? Because we're solving for X, not three X, okay? Same theory here, we're still solving for theta the angle, not theta over two, so I need to multiply across by two in this case, okay? So that's the bit that's a little bit different. So five sixths multiply by two is 10 over six, which is five over three pi and multiply your general angle and we get N four pi. Or here theta is equal to 
22 over 6, which is the same as 11 over 3 pi plus n 4 pi. Okay, so I'm looking up again here to see how many rotations I have. Okay, I only have one. Okay, so n is equal to zero. Okay, so we're on my first tan cycle. So theta is equal to five over three pi. I sub in zero for here, so he all goes to zero. So that's gone. And over here, theta is equal to 11 over three pi. Okay. Um, if you went to n is equal to one, okay, because you were used to doing it for other questions, watch what would happen, okay? So five over three pi. So I'm done here. My question is done here. There are my two answers, okay? So theta is equal to five over three pi plus, I'd sub in one times four pi. Get out your calculator and you have five over three pi plus four pi and I'm getting 17 over 3 pi and I'm going to S to D him. Oh no, that doesn't work. Um, I'm changing him to a whole number. So 5, 10, 15. So it's equal to 5 and 2 thirds pi. Okay. What I want to show you here is that you've gone outside your domain. Okay. So you're now bigger than 4 pi. Okay. So you discard this answer. OK, you've gone outside your window of interest, which was zero to four pi. OK, and obviously then if the one on the left breaks it, well, we're starting off with the bigger angle here. So let me go back and change that five to an 11. And I've got 23 over 3 pi, so 7, 14, 21, 7 and 2 thirds pi. So you've definitely broken across the 4 pi. So again, discard that answer. Okay, so if you go too far, just keep an eye here and discard. Okay, so some teachers teach it this way that you keep going with n is equal to until you've broken the domain. And that's a perfectly fine way of doing it as well as long as you discard those answers. So these were your two answers for this particular question. All right, part B. The diagram shows OAB, a sector of a circle of radius seven centimeters with center O. In the sector, angle BOA equals 1.2 radians. The area of the shaded region, okay, is 21, find the length of BC. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. Okay, so I'm looking is this at in that. our papers. Um, this is the 2020 paper, so it depends on how new your paper is. Um, if you got them at the start of 2020, uh, at the start of sixth year, it won't be in it. Um, I'm not sure if they brought out papers with 2020 in them at all. So you might have to download it from examinations.ie. So I'd say take a screenshot for now and um, download it later. Okay, so when I look at this shape that I know the area of, um, it's not a shape that I recognize. It's not a triangle, it's not a full circle. It's not even a full um, sector of a circle, okay? So I'm going to have to get at this indirectly. So let's go back to our original shape, which was a sector of a circle, okay? And I know there's a page in the log tables in area and volume that deals with the sector of a circle here. Okay, so you have a few formulas. You have, sorry, you have area and um, the length of the, of the arc, okay? So we're dealing with area and we're in radians. That's why I'm circling this particular one. If I was degrees, I'd be down the bottom. So area is equal to a half or squared theta. Okay, so let's write that down. So area of a sector is equal to a half or squared theta. Okay, so let me get the area of that sector. 
So it's a half. My radius is seven squared and my theta, my angle is 1.2. Okay, let's put that into the calculator. So a half by seven sevens, 49 by 1.2. And I getting 29.4 units squared. Okay, so now I've got the area of this full sector, okay? And I have the area of this piece, so subtracting is going to give me the area of the triangle. Why am I getting the area of the triangle? I suppose it's because I know the most about it. So I know that this is seven. I have an angle in it. So I'm hoping from that, I'm going to be able to find, I suppose, the length of CO. And if I have the length of CO, I can subtract that from the seven that's here. And that's going to give me BC because there's no way I'm going to get BC from this particular shape because uh, there's no formula. It's not a, one of the, the, the shapes. Okay, so let's get the area of the triangle. So, so it'll be 29.4 minus the 21 that they told us was here. What's that? 8.4 centimeters squared. Okay, let me draw that triangle so and see where I am with it. So I have seven. I have an angle of 1.2 radians and I have an area of 8.4 centimeters squared. I have an area, okay? And I suppose I have a right angle. Okay, back to the log tables. Uh, area and volume, okay? And I'm down here at the bottom with the triangle. So there's half the base by the perpendicular height. Great formula, half the base. Could nearly get that, but I don't have the perpendicular height. So he's not gonna work. The next formula, half AB sine C. Okay, so half AB sine C works as follows. Um, if this is gonna be my angle, then I have to take the two sides, either side of it, okay? So let me go back to the diagram for that. So half A, B, sine C. So A, A, B, sine of the angle between them. It's called the included angle. So when you're using this formula, you have to use what's called the included angle. It's the angle between the two sides that you're taking. Of course, you could take C, B, but you'd have to take this angle here. Okay, or you can go C, A, but it has to be the included angle here. OK, so if that's going to be my angle, I'm going to have the, the length seven and this length down here. OK, so I'm going to put an X down there. And now I can say using that formula, that area of the triangle is equal to a half AB sine C. So it's equal to a half of seven by X by sine 1.2. And that is equal to, yes, we know the area of that triangle, 8.4. Okay, let's work that out. So 0.5 by seven by sine 1.2. Yeah, I get a big decimal point for that. That's equal to 3.2621x is equal to 8.4. I'm gonna divide across by that. So that I'm left with X being equal to 8.4 divided by, I'm just hitting the answer button on the calculator because that always remembers your last. Two point five seven five rounded. Okay, so that X was the length of CO. Okay, so therefore the length of BC is equal to seven, which is the length of the whole thing minus 2.575, so it's equal to seven minus answer, 4.425 centimeters, any rounding needed, decimal place. So the length of BC is equal to 4.4 centimeters. So a little bit of trig mixed in with area in that particular question, okay? So that was question four in, in 
I suppose last year's paper, November's paper, or whenever they sat it. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.